Hi, welcome to my channel, Naughty Gnome Crafts. My name is Sarah, and you can find me as Naughty Gnome on Instagram. Whether you are a new or returning viewer, thanks so much for joining me. I hope that you like this video, and if you do, please make sure you hit the like button on the way out, and consider subscribing to my channel if you enjoy my content. Today's video is going to be a recap of my favorite makes of 2021, and then we're gonna have a few reflections at the end about my year of making and some intentions for 2022. Before we get started, today I am wearing my uh, True Bias Nico top out of a viscose rib knit that I got from Knit Pop, and then I layered my Closet Core Cali shirt out of double gauze over top of it. This was actually an outfit suggestion that was um, given to me by Michelle of Michelle Sews Again. So thank you so much, Michelle. I thought I would go ahead and try it out and see if I liked it, and I do. So yeah, let's just get started with the video. So in 2021, I actually completed 147 projects. The vast majority of them were sewing makes, but I did have a few knitting, crochet, and spinning makes. And because I have so many things, um, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about the number and my thoughts about that at the end. But because there's so many things, there was just no way I was going to do a recap of everything that I made because that would be insanely long. So instead, what I did was I decided to go through my list of makes and pull out the ones that were my favorites in order to share them with you in this video. Now, I didn't have a set number. At first, I was thinking I would choose like a top 10 or something, but I just decided why limit myself to a number? I'm just going to go through and make a list of the ones that were my favorites, and then that's going to be the number no matter what it is. And it just so happens that fortuitously for the YouTube algorithm or whatever, I had 21 makes in 2021 that were my favorites. So that is what I'm going to share with you right now. So I have categorized them according to different um, uh, garment types, and I'm going to share them with you, but they're not ranked in any order. They're just my favorite makes. I'm not saying that one's better than another. Um, so that's how I'm going to present this list. And because there are like 21 is still quite a few things, I'm not going to be like pulling them out and modeling them for you, but I do have pictures of absolutely everything. And so I will be inserting pictures um, up here so you can see what I'm talking about as we go along. So let's start with tops. The first top on my list that I really loved was McCall's 8042. It's the hashtag Mia McCall's top. And I made this blouse out of a rayon fabric that I got from DNH Fabrics. Now, the thing that I mostly love about this top is the fabric. I just think that the print and the design of it is beautiful. It's a very flowy blouse and it has a tie neck and it has um, lovely lantern sleeves. And I just really enjoy wearing this top. Um, I think that it's, for being a multicolored print, I feel like it's actually really versatile and you can wear it with lots of different colors and different things. And so I do really love wearing this top. The second top is the assembly line puff sleeve shirt. This was my very first needle sharp box that I received and it's made out of a viscose linen slub blend in this very beautiful like pine green color. And um, I, I have to say, I didn't really love making this top. I do really like wearing it. I like the shape of the sleeves. I like how the neckline is built. Um, it's just a really, really pretty shape. It's very feminine. And because it's a solid color, it goes with a lot of things in my wardrobe. And so that's another favorite. The next top on my list is the Pattern Scissors Cloth Galaxy Tee. I feel like this one was a favorite of the sewing community and I can definitely see why. Um, it's a puff sleeve, short sleeve crew neck shirt, and I made mine out of a bamboo jersey that I got from Threadbare Fabrics several years ago. And what I really like about this is that it's a basic, it goes with a lot of different things, but that puff sleeve sort of elevates it a little bit and makes it a little bit more special and not just a plain t-shirt. So I really wore that one quite a lot when it was warmer out, and I'm looking forward to getting it back out in the spring. The next top on my list is the Fiber Mood Ayla shirt. I made this out of a cotton rayon plaid um, blend that I got from Joanne Fabrics. I really like the print and the colors in this plaid, and I think that it works really nicely for this shirt. It's just a simple short sleeve button up shirt, and it has grown on sleeves, so it's pretty easy to construct and put together. It was easy to match the plaids, and I just really like it. Um, it's a little bit cropped, and I feel like I, it looks really good with high-waisted um, pants and skirts and I just really enjoy wearing that one as well. The next top on my list is the Jennifer Lauren Handmade Ailing Blouse. 
This I made out of a double gauze. Actually, it's this color right here. It's sort of a raisin color. And I really love the shape of this top. I love the square neckline. I love how the sleeves are just slightly puffy, but they're not too exaggerated. I like the A-line um, shape of the top. And um, it's a really comfortable fabric to wear. I think I'm gonna be able to wear it pretty much year round. And um, yeah, I really love this top. The final top on my list is the Soho 7 toaster sweater. This was the second version that I made. I had made an, my first one in a previous year. And this was made out of a quilted knit that I got from a Surge fabric shop. And I, made, I also made a matching skirt, which did not make it onto my favorites, but I really like the top in particular because it's just a little bit more versatile. I can throw it on with jeans, I can wear it with leggings. I really like the print of it and I like the color and it's really very comfortable and cozy to wear. And the toaster sweater pattern with the raglan sleeve is one of my favorite sweatshirt patterns. I just really love the shape of the funnel neck. And yeah, I always love putting that one on. So now let's move on to bottoms. So the first bottom on my favorites list is the Papercut Patterns Palisade Shorts. So I made these out of a pretty heavyweight linen that I had in my stash from the fabricstore.com. And um, I really liked these shorts. And to be honest, I'm not much of a shorts wearing person generally, because I can't really wear them to work. But because of this past year and the pandemic and all that, I've been able to wear shorts more because I've been at home. But I just really like how it's a basic natural linen color and I love those crisscross pockets. It was a really interesting construction and I was able to get a good fit and I wore them a lot during the summer. So I really like those shorts and I would like to make the pants someday eventually. The next bottom on my list is Butterick 6743. It's a midi skirt made out of a Rifle Paper Company rayon. This for me was all about the fabric. You're gonna see a lot of Rifle Paper Company in my overall list. And um, I just really love the print. I like that I put slits in it, so it, the way that it moves is really like, beautiful and drapey. And it's a very simple skirt to wear, kind of similar to the Mia McCall's top. There's just so many colors in the skirt that it goes with a lot of different things. And um, I haven't really worn it in the winter, although I think that I could, but it's definitely certainly a spring and summer staple for me. And um, I'd like to make another one at some point. And then the final bottom on my list is actually a refashion. So I originally had made the Simplicity 9141 dress out of a linen that I got from Joann's. And as a dress, it just didn't work out. I had some issues with the shearing and the bodice and it just didn't really fit right. And so I ended up chopping off the bodice and just adding a waistband and turning it into a simple tiered broomstick style skirt. And I actually got a ton of wear out of that skirt in the summer. It's just so swishy and comfortable. It's great to wear on hot days and it's a basic black, so it goes with everything. And I'm really happy that I took the time to go ahead and do the refashion because I really think that, that, is good, that the skirt version is gonna be in my wardrobe for years to come and I'll be, continue to get it out summer after summer. It'll never really go out of style. And I'm really happy with how that came out in the end. So moving on to outer layers. So the first thing on my list is McCall's 5525 Trench. I made this way back in January. It was on my Make 9 list, and I'm so glad that I actually did the Make 9 because there, I probably never would have made this coat if it hadn't been for the Make 9. I made it out of a um, classic beige cotton twill that I got from Stylemaker Fabrics, and then I also used Bimberg Rayon for the lining, and I can't remember where I got that from. It might have been Vogue Fabrics, or it might have been Mood. I can't remember. Um, but this was this, this was the first coat that I ever made, even though I've been sewing for many, many years. And it was challenging, but I was able to get through it in the end. And I have worn this coat just so much in the spring and the fall. Um, it's I think it's going to be a classic in my wardrobe for years to come. I've actually already had to do some repairs on it because um, I had some trouble with needles breaking because of the fabric thickness. And so one of my belt loops in the back actually kind of popped off because it wasn't really secured that well. So I did have to go back and fix that. I definitely have to need to go back in and fix some of the buttonholes because my buttonhole function on my sewing machine is absolutely awful. And so um, it doesn't work half the time. So usually I have to end up doing my buttonholes manually. And so I didn't do the best job in the buttonholes. And I think that some of them have already um, kind of frayed through. So I need to go back and fix that. But once I do those things, I really do think this coat is gonna be a classic that's in my wardrobe forever. And um, I'm so glad that I took on the challenge and made this trench coat. Um, I don't know that I would make coats a lot, but I do really think that the time and the money and the effort that I put into this one 
um, was, was well spent. So that's one of my favorite makes of 2021. The next outer layer piece is, I, I could kind of duplicate all the things that I just said about the trench for this next one. It's the Alina Design Company Hampton jean jacket. This was my first time making a jean jacket and it is your traditional, um, the way that you would typically think of a jean jacket. It has like the, um, the chest pockets, it has welt pockets, it has all the hardware. Um, it uses a lot of buttons and the jean style, um, what are they called? The ones that you hammer on those buttons. And I'm super thrilled with how it came out. I, this is the first time in my entire life that I've had a jean jacket where the sleeves are the proper length on me, and I just love that. And I used a stretch uh, light wash denim that I got from DNH Fabrics that had been in my stash for quite a while. And I did do some distressing with sandpaper on the jacket so it looks a little bit more worn in. It's just another piece that I feel like is going to be in my closet for the next 20 years. I'm never going to get tired of wearing it. And yeah, I got a lot of wear out of it this year. The next favorite on my outer layers list is Simplicity 8749. This was part of a collab that I did with Madi of Madi Sews, and we both made the same pattern. It's a Mimi G blazer, and I used a Rifle Paper Company linen cotton blend for my blazer, and I also made a matching skirt, which is not in my favorites, um, but I do love the jacket. It's a beautiful, uh, bold, burgundy floral print, and although it is a print that's maybe a little bit more, um, I guess, out there than I would normally wear. I do think that it is still wearable, um, and so I have worn it to work quite a bit. Um, I do think that the full suit with the blazer and the skirt is a little bit much for me, but I have worn the pieces separately, and um, the blazer in particular is a favorite, and it's the first time that I've ever made a lined blazer to completion. I've made, I've tried to make a blazer before and failed at it, so this was my first successful blazer, and it kind of taught me that making a jacket really isn't all that bad. So I did enjoy the experience of making that one, and I do like wearing it as well. And then my final outer layer piece is Simplicity 9239. It's my denim shirt jacket. So this is one of those rare pieces where, um, so a lot of the things that I made, you know, of the 147, a lot of the more basics that I do wear all the time, but I just couldn't put them on my favorites list because they're not really that special. You know, like the basic t-shirts and stuff, maybe I wear them constantly, but it's just nothing that I'm looking at being like, oh yeah, that's a favorite, you know? But this shirt jacket is actually a basic that is also one of my favorites. And I think the reason for that is its versatility. Um, I made it out of a dark wash denim, that I, a Mind the Maker denim that I got from D&H Fabrics. And, um, I just really like the shape of the jacket. I like how it goes with everything. I use red contrast stitching, which is just a little bit of a different touch. And I just really, really love that jacket. And I'm, like, as I said in my original video, I'm just looking forward to seeing how it's going to uh, wear and weather over the years. Um, I think it's gonna be another classic that will be in my wardrobe forever, even if the shirt jacket fad goes out or whatever, I'm still gonna keep wearing mine. And um, yeah, I really love that jacket. And it's a bonus that it is such a basic that goes with so many different things in my wardrobe. So the next category is dresses and jumpsuits. So the first thing on my list is the McCall's 8058, which is a navy, just a very simple t-shirt dress. It's made out of a navy floral cotton jersey that I got from Style Maker Fabrics. And I just think that this is like quintessentially my style. It's just a simple crew neck form-fitting t-shirt dress. Um, it's very versatile. You can wear it in the winter with tights or you can wear it all year round pretty much. And um, yeah, I think the reason this made my favorites, even though it is so simple, is the fabric, uh, the print of the fabric, and also that I just do feel like it really suits my style. Next on the list is the Jennifer Lauren Handmade Sorrel Dress. This was made out of a Rifle Paper co Company quilting cotton that I got from fabric.com. I love the fabric, I love the print of this dress, and to be honest, I actually didn't wear it a lot. Um, I'm not sure why, but um, it is still one of my favorites. I think that the style of the dress really suits me. I like the fit. Um, I really um, have enjoyed all of the Jennifer Lauren handmade patterns that I've made this year, and I think a few of them did make my favorites. And yeah, I would, would actually like to make this dress again at some point, probably in a solid. So this did make my favorites, even though I think I only wore it a couple of times. Next on my list is the Simplicity 8875. It is a midi dress that's just very on trend right now. Um, it has like a little bit of a puffy short sleeve. 
Um, it has a ruffle at the bottom and um, I just, I love the way that the dress looks. I love the flow of it. I love the drape of it. I did have a hard time sewing it and I think that I even had a hole in the fabric that I had to go back and fix, but I just really do love the dress. I think that it's lovely and um, it's very 90s inspired. Maybe that's why I like it so much, but yeah, that was also one of my favorites. The next dress on my list is the Helen's Closet Reynolds dress. So this is another one that is all about the fabric. It is a rifle paper company, Rayon. It's actually the same fabric as my pink midi skirt. It's just in a different colorway. Um, and I love this dress because it's such a simple shape, but it's very versatile. And so um, in the summertime, I can wear it without a top underneath, or in the wintertime, I can layer it and wear it as more of a pinafore style with a top underneath. And I just love that about the dress. Um, it is a dress that another shape that's so simple and so like easy to wear that I do see myself reaching for this pattern again and perhaps making it again in the future. And yeah, I just, I, every time I wear that dress, I love it. I just feel like I look so pretty in it and I just, I love the fabric. The next dress on my list is the new look 6692. This was the dress that I made for my birthday out of Liberty of London Tonalon that I got from fabric.com. It's in red, which is my favorite color. And I just feel like this dress is another like very now sort of dress that has the square neckline. It has elasticated like semi puffy sleeves. It has tears, it's a midi length. And yeah, it's another dress that when I put it on, I just feel so pretty and I love how um, sort of flowy and swishy that it is. And the, the Tonalon is just such a beautiful fabric. I know now why so many people love it and it is very expensive. So it's not something that I'm gonna be purchasing, you know, like all the time, but for a special garment, I definitely think that it's worth the cost. And I do really love my birthday dress. The last dress on my list is the Deer and Doe Maya Sodas dress. I made this as part of a collab with T of Crumpets Tea and Sewing. We both made the Maya Sodas dress and she actually made two, but I just made the one. Um, this is part of a needle sharp box and I made it out of a rayon crepe fabric that has sort of an abstract zebra print. And this dress was actually a total surprise to me. I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did. I do think that I modified the the pattern and the style a little bit to really suit me. Basically, I made it much shorter so that it, um, it's more in proportion with my uh, body shape. And I just love it. I was, I honestly was not expecting to like it as much as I do. Um, I haven't worn it a whole lot because it was one of those things that I made sort of at the end of the season and now it's kind of too cold to be wearing it. Um, but certainly in the spring, I'm gonna get it, get it back out and I think that I will wear it more then. And the last one piece on my list is a jumpsuit. It's the Celine jumpsuit by fabricstore.com. It's a free pattern. It is a crossover like faux wrap that's elasticated at the waist. And I made mine out of a pinstripe linen that I got from Stylemaker Fabrics. And I wore this jumpsuit a lot. Um, I made it, I think I made it like early summer and then I continued to wear it all the way through summer and into the fall. It's a little bit cold to be wearing it now, although I could probably layer it with like a turtleneck. Um, but yeah, I just love this jumpsuit. I love that it's stripy. I love the faux wrap. It's very comfortable to wear and I would definitely make another one of these at some point. I also made the Zadie jumpsuit and I do like that one. It's sort of a similar style, but for ease of wearing, this one's definitely easier to wear because because of the elastic, you can just pull it on and off and you don't have to worry about like wrapping and tying and all that. That is the one thing about the Zadie that I feel like makes it a little bit less wearable is that it's more fussy. The, the Celine jumpsuit is super easy to take on and off. So um, that's what I really like about it. And then the final thing on my favorites list, uh, my 21st favorite of 2021, is actually a piece for my home. And that is my crochet granny rectangle blanket. I started crocheting this blanket back in, I think it was 2016. So it has been in progress for many, many years and I finally finished it and um, we love it. Our, it's on, it lives on my couch downstairs and it helps cover up my dog at night when she gets cold or during the day too. Um, she just loves snuggling under it and we love snuggling under it. I love that it's completely made out of scraps. So I used all fingering weight yarns that were left over from other projects. I just love how colorful it is. Um, yeah, it's definitely, I mean, I'm not ranking things, but if I had to like rank a top three, I think it would probably be in the top three because it's just such a long-term project and it has so many 
aspects to it that I really love and I also think that it's beautiful. So for the second part of this video, now that we have covered the 21 favorites of 2021, I want to talk a little bit about some reflections. So when I was going back through my list of the things that I had made, I was really quite shocked to see that I had finished almost 150 things. And I know that some people might look at that and be like, wow, that's so amazing or whatever. But for me, it was sort of almost like, I don't want to be too negative about it. Like it is what it is, but I almost feel like, like, whoa, like that's too much. Um, the last thing that I want to do in my making is to be like my own fast fashion, like turning out stuff. Like that's not what I want. What I want out of my garment sewing and really anything that I make is I want to make things that fit me well, that suit my style, that I'm going to have in my closet for years to come, that I'm going to wear over and over again until they wear out. And I feel like the sheer number of things that I made, like I just didn't really achieve that goal for a lot of the things. Now, to be fair to myself, I did make some things for other people. Not everything that I made was a garment, but most of the things that I made in 2021 were sewing projects for me. So just being honest about that. Um, so the first thing that I want to think about for 2022 is that I want to focus on quality and not quantity. And the first major thing is just slowing down. I have this sort of like push and pull where I have a large fabric stash, you know, I have all these patterns and I want to make all these things. And so I kind of get overly excited sometimes and feel like I need to churn through this stuff and get through it so that I can get more. If I'm going to be honest, that's part of it. And I need to just slow down and think more carefully about, you know, I have this fabric in my stash and it's beautiful and I want it to be something that I love and that I'll reach for again and again, and just be a little bit more mindful and more thoughtful about what do I want to make out of this? Like what would really suit me? And maybe even like get rid of some of the things that maybe I loved at one time, but I don't like that I don't think are really me anymore. And just not even like try to force myself to use things that just don't really suit me anymore. Um, and so some of the things that go with that are like more thoughtful planning. You know, oftentimes when I would sit down and make my plans for the month, I would kind of do it at the very end of the month and just think like, oh, what are the projects that I want to do next? And I'm not necessarily thinking like longer and harder about, you know, what do I really need in my wardrobe? You know, what this piece of fabric that I have, what do I really want it to be best? Like what would be best suited to turn it into that, um, would really work for me. And so I think I might want to start the planning process a little bit earlier and just think about it more and kind of sit on it and really make sure that I'm making thoughtful decisions rather than more snap decisions, if that makes sense. So number two on my reflections is that I want to take part in challenges and collabs that fit me and my lifestyle and my style and not the other way around. And so, I mean, I think this is very natural that, you know, I want to be part of the sewing community. I want to participate in challenges. I, um, I still want to do that, but I was finding that sometimes like I'd hear about a challenge and then be like, Oh, what can I make that would fit this challenge rather than doing it in the other way, which would be much better, which is like, what am I making right now that also fits in with this challenge? And if it doesn't fit in with this challenge, then I just shouldn't do it. And I'm not trying to like be negative about any sort of challenge, but like just an example of that is that the very end of December, there was the So Festive Challenge that was hosted by So Simply Delilah and um, Kim Gaddy Sews. And it was, the point of it was to make a garment out of like a, a, a holiday novelty Christmas fabric. And so I, I participated because I wanted to be part of the challenge, but I made something that like, although I don't think it's bad, it's just not me. Cause I am not a person who wears novelty Christmas fabric. I'm just not. And so I made this vest and I think the vest is cute and I've worn it once. Um, but I just don't think looking back on it, it was not a good challenge fit for me because it just doesn't fit my style. It doesn't fit the way that I live my life. And so in the future, I just want to be more mindful of, you know, yes, it's okay to get excited about challenges. It's okay to want to be part of the sewing community, but I need to be true to my own style and, um, you know, do it on my own terms. And 
sort of going hand in hand with that. I mean, I think this is a very natural thing, but like I need to make sure that I am making things for me and that suit me and my life and my style and not be making things for social media, whether it's the gram or YouTube or whatever. You know, there's sort of this pressure that I put on myself that I need to turn out all these new things so that I'll have content to post. And that's really not the point. You know, like the point is, like I said in the beginning, you know, like making things that fit me, that suit me, that I can wear forever. And yeah, like stop trying to impress Instagram because that's just not what this is about. And number three on my ref ref my reflections list, I've been talking too long, I'm like running out of steam, um, but I wanna make sure that I use what I have first. So at the very end of the year, I had saved money all year to spend on Black Friday, and I did spend a very large quantity of money on fabric and patterns and stuff. And so at this point, I just feel like my stash is quite substantial and that I need to try really hard to use up what I have for as long as I can before I buy something else. And I don't want to do like a no buy challenge or anything that the, the various challenges that people do, like selling through 30 yards of fabric or whatever, because that stuff just doesn't work for me. Like I will do it for a little while and then I'll just like feel deprived and I'll binge on things. I really need to take things week by week of just like, let's just get through this week and not buy anything. <laughs> And I just need to keep doing that for as long as I can. And I'm sure that at some point I will buy something and that is fine, but I need to just not be mindlessly buying things. I wanna do it with intention. Um, so for my list of things, you know, I wanna to stop doing impulse buying. Um, I wanna always look through my own stash and my patterns first before I um, go out and buy something new. This one's gonna be hard. Like for patterns, when there's new release sales that come out, I think that I just really need to sit on it and wait because the thing that happens is a new release comes out, it has a limited time sale usually, and you see all of the wonderful, beautiful makes on Instagram, and I see other people look really great in it, and so I think I wanna look great too, and so I'll buy it. And then later on, I'll realize that it's not even something that would suit me, or it's just not something that I even really wanna wear. Um, and so I need to not get caught up in the new release hype. So I do think that's gonna be difficult, but I think the best way for me to go about that is just to, if I see something that I like when it comes out, bookmark it and then just leave it alone and then come back to it in another month or something and then decide if it's something that I really want. Because um, yeah, I think the main thing is just to always ask myself, is this something that I want to wear and try to think of myself and my life and not this sort of fantasy life that I see of other people's pictures on Instagram or YouTube or whatever and like think that I can fit myself into that because that's just not always the case. Um, so yeah, those are my reflections on 2021 and the intentions that I want to take into 2022. I would love to um, get some discussion in the comments and see what you guys have thought about your year of making um, and what your intentions are for the coming year. And um, yeah, like a little bit about maybe some consumerism and how you feel about it and, um, and how it works with the snowing community and social media and all that. I'm really interested to hear your thoughts. So I hope that you enjoyed this video today. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate that you take time out of your day to watch my videos and I will see you again next time.